Well, good morning. Those of you viewing us in Liberia, those of you outside of Liberia and whatever time it, it is, we'd like to say hello to you. Today is the 31st day of July. The year is 2018. And of course, today is uh, election day in Liberia, and it happens to be the by-elections, of course, uh, in Mount Serato County and Dadobong County. As a result of the ascendancy of our now president, His Excellency Ambassador George Manuwea, who was then senator of Montserrado County. Uh, but because of his ascendancy during the election, the 2017 presidential and general election, President Wea was uh, elected as president of the Republic of Liberia. And his vice president, Her Excellency Joel Howard Tiller, who was then senator of Bonn County, also uh, got elected and ascended to the position of vice president of the Republic of Liberia. So as a result of those, um, those ascendancies, from our president and vice president. It left two vacuums in our Liberian Senate. And of course, those vacuums have to be uh, uh, replaced. They have to be closed. And this is why today we are here. And we are exactly here at the uh, at the Kennedy High School. That's uh, the, the small building of the Kennedy High School. And Kennedy High School is actually located in District 6, Pinesville, Montserrado County. And of course, uh, my name is Oscar Moba, heading this uh, live uh, uh, television and Facebook feed on Truth FM Real TV. I'm here with Marka Davis, uh, Augustine Sai, of course. Uh, I'm also here, the guy behind the camera is Andy Ade. And we are trying to see how best we can bring you a live coverage of the voting process here today, specifically at the Kennedy High School, where the President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency, Ambassador George Manawia is expected to shortly be here to cast his vote. So we are here to make sure to bring you a live coverage of the president's uh, vote. And hopefully we will be trying to get uh, the, 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 the voting prison of the vice president, Her Excellency, Madam Joel Howard Tiller. But while we anticipate the arrival of the president, because we are receiving word uh, that the, the president of the Republic of Liberia is just on his way from Togo coming, uh, so while we anticipate the arrival of the president, we just like to talk about the turnout. Yes, we've been uh, in conversation with most of our reporters uh, across the both counties, Montserrado County and that of Bond counties, and the news, that the feedback that we are getting, of course, they are not favorable for our own uh, election in Liberia, the by-elections. Of course, turnout is so, so low. It's so discouraging. So my colleague, Marka Davids, uh, is here. Of course, uh, I, I have other teammates. We've been here both uh, from the, the uh, Real TV and Truth FM Live. So we're going to be giving our own uh, opinion, our critical analysis on the by-election today, the turnout. What are those uh, responsible for the low turnout as we are receiving reports from our reporters in the field that indeed the turnout is so, so low. So Marka Davis is here with me. He has just joined me. I'd like to say, Marka, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Oscar Moba, and good morning to all of you viewing um, Real TV and True FM Live. Uh, we are happy to be here. It is our own mandate as members of the press, as the media, to ensure that everything that happens in a country, because our, our own mind is that democracy will, flour will flourish in our country, Liberia. Uh, so it is our work to ensure, it is our work to ensure that we bring everything that happened, uh, that which will promote democracy to the people across the world. And I'd like to say welcome if you are in the United States, if you're in Asia, wherever part of the world you are viewing True FM Live, we'd love to say thanks ever so much for joining us. Now let's talk about uh, the turnout here. You, it, maybe it's close, uh, maybe it's uh, somewhere on your if you look on your left, you see that, um, of course, uh, <laughs> no no queue, no one is standing in line. People are just coming single-handedly and just going inside. The place is not as jammed as uh, it used to be during the 2017 presidential and general elections. What do you think, uh, in your own journalistic view, is responsible for this? Well, there are lots of contributing factors. From my own view, um, as a journalist, I have followed election over the time. Uh, in 2011, we were around 2017, we followed election photo foot and we knew exactly what happened in the country. Um, what is happening uh, is clear that what we've understood from several other persons, especially electors themselves, or people who are supposed to be voting 
is that there is a lot of frustration. Uh, you know, I have said this over the time, that government in Africa, politicians, when they are about to come to power, they give the people huge impression. Um, some of these things they are able to do, but the way, because it comes in a way, Oscar, when people feel that the government that is in power is not doing well, they use that as a means of ensuring that they can get that government out and get themselves into power. And so if you give the electorates, the people of the country, the citizens, the huge expectation that, yes, I can bring heaven on earth, and then the people build that huge expectation. Now if things get to go bad, the way people expect things to happen over time, when it is not happening, the people get um, frustrated. I can tell you today, this is not the first uh, voting center that we have been since this morning. We, we took calls from our reporters and correspondents in other parts of the country, and this is the same thing they told us. Voters turnout was low, but there are several factors, like I said. Now, we have certain lawmakers in this race. You understand? And over the time, some pundits, political pundits, have said that because of the president's pronouncement that this country, that the government, the new government was inheriting is broke. The country is broke. The economy is broken. And so it would take the government some time to strive, to push harder, to ensure that it can rebuild the economy. That speaks to the minds of citizens that there is a need for the government to ensure that it found means to support the country's economy. But then, feeding a candidate who is already a sitting lawmaker, who was just elected in less than six months to contest the election, that if he wins, there is going to be another by election, which will also cost the government a huge sum of money, shows that the people are continuing to feel frustrated. That no, if the government is telling us, us that this country is broke, and then we are creating room for extra expenses, then that means that this government is not in the interest of the people. That Those are some of the reasons why this turnout today is poor. People are listening to several persons saying, I'm not going to vote today because it will vote for, for certain lawmakers. There's going to be another money problem. We, we already facing problems with hacking the prices of, of basic commodities in the country, the fluctuation in the exchange rate and all of that. So, I mean, Liberians are frustrated. Let's be frank about it. Definitely, definitely. According to him, Liberians are frustrated. Yes, you cannot get the fact that uh, there is a huge economic uh, hardship. Uh, the situation is appalling in Liberia, but the government is doing what if, if you know it can do to be able to emancipate its people from uh, the the hardship that the the citizens are currently faced with. So, well, uh, just to give you some um, some highlights, some historical information. Of course, uh, like we said. The by-elections are actually taking place in two counties out of the uh, 15 counties of Liberia. We have Montserrado and that of Bon counties. Those are the two counties that the by-elections are actually taking place in. And in each of those counties, for Montserrado specifically, we have about seven candidates. Seven candidates who are just contesting the seat, just the single seat in Montserrado County, seven candidates. And among those seven candidates, I tell you, we have two sitting lawmakers already. Uh, we have Representative Sa Joseph of Montserrado County, District Number 13. Yes, mo District Number 13, Sa Joseph. And that of uh, Honorable Representative Yeka Koluba of District Number 10. Those are the two sitting lawmakers already. But then someone will argue that how can you be a sitting lawmaker, especially from the lower house, because we're talking about the... Um, the, the both houses now of the legislature. Yeah. Our legislature is divided into two houses, as you may be aware. We have the House of Representatives, and we also have the House of Senate, the Liberian Senate, which, uh, of course, is known in Liberia commonly as the House of Elders. So we have two of the guys who are actually uh, desiring to leave from the lower house to that of the upper house or to the Liberian Senate. So uh, our Yeke Kolubai, and that of Sa Joseph are the two seated lawmakers already. So there are some Liberians who are arguing that why would you want to create another vacuum when uh, you know you have <laughs> you 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 already have a position. But again, on the other side of the coin, there is no constitutional backing that forbids those individuals from contesting and that is another seat, especially in the in the, in the Senate. So well, the guys have their constitutional backing to contest. 
we just hope that uh, citizens can be able to turn up to come and vote. So like I said, we have seven candidates in Mount Serato County. And of course, in Bond County, uh, where the vice president comes from, we have five candidates. Of course, in Bond County again, uh, <laughs> a, a certain representative, uh, Marvin Cole, is, is, is also contesting to be the next senator of Bond County. But let me take uh, a colleague here. Uh, from the Renaissance Communications Incorporated, Truth 96.1 FM and Real TV. Augustine Sai is one of our reporters. Remember, we are here to uh, give our own critical analysis on the election today. Uh, Augustine, you were here in the country during the 2017 presidential and general elections, and you, you followed all of the procedures, you followed all of the activities to turn up. Comparing the 2017 election to this by election, what is your own thought about it? Well, first of all, uh, let me admit with uh, my own disappointment in the turnout this morning. And looking at the time, I think Liberians should now be in a queue to make a decision where in tomorrow it can speak for them and the incoming generation. What I want to say, I have observed, uh, covered a lot of elections from 2011, and I even uh, reported during the by elections in my Gibi County. And I have followed other by elections even in Lofa County. What I want to say to Liberian, though you may not be seeing it better for you now, but all you can do for yourself is to come and make the decision. Do you think the hope of the people uh, have actually been dashed? you think they are discouraged in their leaders? Well, there are a lot of factors, as Maka said. There are a lot of factors that are responsible for uh, the poor turnout. But again, I don't want to say poor turnout because for the elections that are called over the years, I come in, I come in. For the elections that are covered, for the elections that are called over the years, at times you look for polling stations, there will be poor turnout in the morning hours. By the afternoon hours, people will start coming in. By the evening hours, people will be in. But we are optimistic that uh, Liberians will be encouraged by our words that we are sending out because the decision you make today uh, stand a better time for you and your children will put you into a better position. So what I can assure you that we journalists now need to talk to our people because there are too many persons who are frustrated. The electorates are frustrated. There are arguments that uh, the electorates are frustrated because you had two sitting lawmakers already um, contesting in the election. Do you think that is an argument that can hold water? Well, for now, it will not hold water. The only time it holds water when you go into the referendum and make sure that that provision within the Constitution is trashed out. But for now, it will not hold water because your legislature were there when, 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 when one of the uh, uh, advocates were advocating for, for, for for uh, city lawmakers to not contest this election. And people did not listen to it. Today you have uh, city lawmakers who faces are only battle badge. So the only thing librarians can do for themselves, time for referendum, go and make the referendum decision so that you will not have similar thing occurring. The President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Ambassador George Manawia, will shortly be here to cast his vote. What, what impression do you think he's gonna have looking at the uh, environment here? Well, there will be a lot of disappointment because I, uh, you know, there are a lot of cries out there that uh, the country is hard. There are too many persons who are looking for their daily bread by now. And you're talking about election. People just got through two uh, elections. That is the, uh, the, 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 yeah, the presidential election and that of the, the by election. People are tired. They're electing people and they are not seeing improvement in their lives. So they are tired electing the same people who are not, uh, quote unquote, doing anything for them. So you think uh, it's just old wine in new jars? Well, uh, uh, humor is dynamic. Humor is dynamic, uh, just as you have life. So today you see a man to be a bad person, tomorrow he changes. So what happens here is, the only thing, as I said, we journalists can now do, those uh, on the radio now can create the awareness, because sitting home may not solve the problem. You might just be electing uh, the, the wrong person. But coming to the polling station to vote, you could be electing the right person. Somebody said the National Elections Commission did not do well in terms of uh, the uh, information dissemination, you know, creating more awareness and sensitization for the public to come out to vote. You think that could be one of the contributing factors to the low turnout? Well, you should also take into consideration the time limit they have. You should also take into consideration what's the time that the National Election Commission had to carry on the awareness uh, 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 campaign, the time for election. So we should also be taking those things into consideration. Or we can say again, this is it. If you don't want by elections, if you don't want certain lawmakers who you are giving six-year mandate to, to abandon your job, to go seeking for another job, 
there should be a serious step during the referendum time wherein those uh, clauses that are in the Constitution that still gives them the right because you listen to somebody telling them that is my constitutional right. Indeed, it is a constitutional right. But it is the same like when people money that you are using. This is taxpayer money. Okay, this is taxpayer money. Okay, thank you. We hope to get back to you. Of course, uh, we are here until the president of the Republic of Liberia can come and cast his vote. My name is Oscar Moba. Andy Ade is behind the camera. Uh, Marka Davis is here with me. Augustine side. Those are all strong, strong reporters from uh, Truth FM Real TV Live. And we are here to bring you an exclusive coverage of the president's voting today during this by-election. Of course, uh, the by-election uh, is as a result of the ascendancy of the president of the Republic of Liberia, his vice president, um, his excellency, George Manawia, and that of uh, her excellency, Joel Howard Tiller, who have ascended to the position of the country's top uh, positions, the presidency and the vice presidency, of course, uh, leaving room for another by-election. In this by-election, there are other political pundits who have argued that this by-election has lost its political test, has lost its uh, political significance, because according to our constitution, the by-election was supposed to be held within a period of uh, 60 to 90 days. But instead, uh, the National Elections Commission, upon the ascendancy of the president, uh, from, from being a senator of Montserrado County and a vice president from being a senator of Bond County. Of course, the election commission put in for over a little over 300, 3 million United States dollars to conduct the by-elections in both counties. But then again, the government said that they never have funds to actually give the election commission, <laughs> you know, the amount the, the commission requested for. So that, that went through some uh, hauling and pulling, some, some ups and downs and was greeted by uh, lots of uh, challenges. But whatever the situation is, of course, uh, the, the president, again, in his wisdom, pray for, pray for the members of the 54th legislature, especially the, uh, the House of Representatives, to uh, come up with a resolution. And he, he said in his, in his request to the 54th legislature, he said that, please, I want this election to be held on the 31st of July, though we know that we have crossed the constitutional time, but uh, we, want, we want this election to be held, of course, um, uh, on the 31st of July. And so the government did everything possible. The government did everything possible. Let's see whether we can talk to some of uh, the, the next staff, of course, to tell us how they feel about the process. We'd like to say uh, good morning to you, sir. You care to tell us your name and what are you, who are you? Are you a, a uh, pulling staff, what position are you occupying? Yeah, I'm one of the pulling staff and Ferguson S. Andrews. Uh, I serve as a pulling, uh, pulling person controller, PQC. Uh, we have been here this morning working, making sure that the process is smooth. How is the tenor here for you? Uh, for now, as it stands, the tenor is not really encouraging. But we hope to see, as the song comes up, to see what will be the tenor. But since this morning, we have been here and people are coming just one by one. But we are we are, we are, we want to see that maybe in the afternoon hour, maybe the tenor will be huge, or in the evening. Has there been any report of uh, citizens coming to, uh, to to cast their vote and perhaps they didn't see the name on the FRR? Oh, not no no report that that we have encountered for now. We make sure all of their names are on the FRR, and we come with make sure that we verify their names. They go to their respective rooms. There have been no complaint, and there have been no other complaint about that. Everything okay. is smoothly done. Everything is smoothly done. Thank you very much. We are receiving signals that the president is just somewhere around. The president of the Republic of Liberia is just somewhere around. So let's talk to this other polling staff. We'd like to say uh, good morning. Good morning. What is your name? I, I see you look a little bit like you discourage the expression on your face. You seem uh, a little bit uh, sleepy. No, I'm not sleeping, but just I work overtime last night and I came for now to the, the, you know, the the cube, the cube is not, you know, really encouraging, so I'm just feeling somehow nervous and other things. Did you work with the election commission uh, during the 2017 election? I worked 2017, the first U.S. representative and, and presidential election, and worked the runoff, and now I'm working for the senatorial election. So if you were to compare the 2017 election to that of this election, what are your thoughts? Uh, for the 2017, both presidential and representative election, there were... There were actually two people you know, contesting, so it will be huge. Okay, so we have to leave you there right now. We're taking a break and moving on to our coverage chapel. We understand that the location has been changed. 
So we are running to Kravit Chapel. Still watching. Keep watching Chupa FM Real TV Live. in broadcast the time has come to unveil the biggest change introducing the new look sports fm we deliver the action choose fm the heart and soul of liberia your number one television station real tv transmitting the real vision together we are team Together, everyone achieve more. We are Renaissance Communications Incorporated, where national unity begins. Thank you very much. This is Oscar Moba, Truth FM Real TV Live, coming to you from uh, Pinesville City, Montserrat County. Specifically, we are in District Number Six, and to be even more precise, we are at Kennedy High School. Of course, this is the smaller building of Kennedy High School, and this is the uh, polling precinct, wherein the President of the Republic of Liberia registered and will be casting his vote. As a matter of fact, we are understanding that this is where exactly he voted during the, uh, the 2017 presidential and representative selections. And of course, he will be here very shortly to cast his vote uh, in this senatorial by-elections. Of course, uh, for Montserrat County, he's going to be voting for his preferred candidate. I can't say for sure who is that preferred candidate. But one thing I know for sure is that uh, the president comes from a political party, which is the Coalition for Democratic Change. And that political party actually has a candidate in this senatorial by-election in Montserrat County. And that candidate happens to be Representative Sir Joseph of District 13 in Montserrat County, a seated lawmaker as a matter of fact, who is also contesting to be the next senator replacing the president, Ambassador George Manuia. So let's talk to uh, one of the electors who have come to cast her vote, uh, of course, we hope to get her to speak to uh, Real TV, Chief FM Live, and to tell us uh, what are her thoughts about uh, today's by-election. We'd like to say good morning and welcome to Real TV. Yeah, I'm Teresa Harris from Kennedy. You live in Kennedy? Of course, yes. And what did you come to do here today? I'm keen to vote. Keen to vote. Yes. That means that you haven't voted already? Yes. Okay. So, uh, now, how do you feel? Not too many persons are here. How do you feel? Well, that's a point of view. But as for me, I'm satisfied by the voting. 
think there's a need that people should come out and cast a vote? Yes. Why do you think so? Let people come and vote. We're forced to vote for our rights. You're forced to vote for your rights. Yes. So what kind of uh, senator are you going to vote for? I'm not asking for the name, but what kind of senator are you looking for? for? Oh, my senator. I shouldn't call a name, right? Yeah, don't call a name. I just want, what kind of senator? You want a senator that will able to represent you? Yes, a senator that will come back, that will be good, that will take care of every one of us in Liberia. Thank you very much. Well, you just listened to her. She has not casted her vote. Uh, she's uh, anticipating to do so. But security is actually getting tight now. They are, uh, the Executive Protection Service security personnel are actually here, fully represented. I think the process is uh, a bit halted because the President Convert is just trooping in. The President Convert is trooping in. So uh, let me try to, to see whether I can get you the names of uh, the contestants, of course, in these by-elections, beginning with Monterado County. We have Bernard DJ Blue Benson Jr. Of course, DJ Blue is noted uh, as one of Liberia's best uh, DJs and, of course, uh, an international DJ. We also have Josephine George Francis, the only female uh, contestant in the election. We have uh, Sahadi Joseph, a seated uh, representative, Monserrato County District 13, vying for the senatorial seat. We have Finley Wakanga. We have Mark Augustine Kishian. We have Yeke Yakpawolo Koluba. We have Markel Do Teperson. And there goes the President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Ambassador Dr. George Manuia, heavily escorted by security personnel. And of course, uh, he's going now to cast his vote. He's waving to uh, the next staff. And we are trying to see how best we can move behind the president. We know it's not going to be easy, but we're moving behind the president. He's uh, going to cast his vote now for uh, his preferred candidate in the Montserrado County by election. The president of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Dr. Ambassador George Manuia, walks into one of the polling, uh, the polling places. Of course, here at the Kennedy High School, we are taking our camera to see the president of the republic trying to uh, enter. Of course, uh, <laughs> we're trying to see whether we can be able to enter there with them and see whether the president, yes, we've been allowed. Thank you so much to the security. We've been allowed, we've been allowed to uh, go and see the president, of course, casting his vote. What of course, so uh, as you can see, the president is now going through the process. Uh, he's checking for his name, and of course, uh, his name has been checked. Uh, his voting card has been pierced already. He goes to the next place uh, and uh, will be issued the ballot paper. It's been stamped by the, uh, <laughs> the next staff. Of course, he folds it and uh, gives it to the president of the Republic of Liberia, who holds his photo card in his hands, of course, gearing up to go and cast his vote for his preferred candidate. The president of the Republic of Liberia gets his ballot uh, paper, walks on to uh, the secret <laughs> area to mark his preferred candidate, and there goes the president of the Republic of Liberia. There goes the president of the Republic of Liberia. Casting, checking, checking his preferred candidate. And of course, those are all uh, election observers from um, the contestants in the by-election. They are here taking notes, observing the entire process, and saying to it that the process is free, fair, transparent, and of course, peaceful. And that we can safely say that uh, since this morning up to now, we haven't received any report of uh, violence or election fraud. So we can safely say that the process is actually free, fair, and uh, peaceful. And we hope that that can continue until the uh, results are announced today. The President of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Ambassador Dr. George Manuia, is still behind uh, the, the box trying to check his preferred candidate. And we are anticipating him coming out anytime soon. 
of course. And after that, he will be dropping the ballot paper into the ballot box uh, right here, right before us. So we are waiting for the president, of course, to complete uh, checking <laughs> his candidate uh, of his choice in this Montserrat County by election. And we can safely say that the president is doing that uh, smoothly. The president of the Republic of Liberia is doing that smoothly. And in a moment from now, we will uh, see the president coming out from behind, uh, of course, the secret uh, ballot area wherein you have to go and mark. You know, election has to do with uh, you and just the ballot paper. So <laughs> no matter the situation, no one knows what to do behind it. No one gets to see what you do. Uh, it's just left with you, your conscience, and of course, the ballot paper. So uh, the president is just executing that very well. And we know that uh, he's going to execute that. The president uh, is coming out now. He has checked his uh, <laughs> his candidate. And he seems like looking around. Uh, what is he looking around for? We don't know. Oh, uh, The president. Yeah, he's been told that there goes the president drops his ballot paper into the ballot box. And he's now going to be inked by all the inker of the... The next staff, <laughs> yes, the president is having uh, a conversation with uh, <laughs> the next staff, and I can see him smiling. Yes, he's been issued. Okay, <laughs> and there goes the president. He's noted for his uh, he's noted for his jokes, of course. So, uh, the president gives permission. The president of the Republic of Liberia gives permission uh, to be photographed. Of course, the president gives permission. To be photographed, uh, the president of the Republic of Liberia gives permission uh, to be photographed here. I tell you, uh, the observers, <laughs> the observers are actually trying to take a photo with the president. I tell you, <laughs> the president of the Republic of Liberia. What a moment! What a moment! It's an opportunity, uh, of course, for the observers here uh, taking. Let's see whether we can get engaged with the president. We hope to get engaged with the president. Uh, if we are permitted, we, we hope to get engaged with the president. We want to get engaged with the president. Let's see whether we can talk to the president, Your Excellency. Good morning. You've just casted your vote. How was it for you? Oh, it's okay. I think uh, it's a process. Uh, you can see it's not crowded. You know, the people come in, uh, of course, the senatorial election, by elections. But the process is good. You know, I went in and... Uh, cast my vote. Are you disappointed on the turnout? Uh, we re we've been receiving reports about low turnout since the process started early this morning. No, I'm not disappointed. You know, I know a uh, sedition will come out and, and so I will be victorious. So we are not jittering. You know, this is our county and uh, we're going to take back our county. That's my seat. So we know we're going to capture that seat. What more do you have to say finally as we take leave of you, uh, Excellency, to other Liberians who are still home and have not come out yet to vote? What uh, uh, they should come out to vote, I think it's important for them, most especially our brothers and sisters, most Iranians, it's important. You know, this is the seat that they gave me, and uh, uh, now I'm the president, we have to make sure that our party captured the seat, so they have to come out. Yeah. That's the voice of the president of the Republic of Liberia. We are humbled to have spoken with him, His Excellency Ambassador Dr. George Manawia. Leaves, leaves the pool in place, of course, the president now leaves. The president is heavily escorted, now leaves. Uh, the president now leaves. The president now leaves. Of course, the president now leaves uh, the Kenanja, Kenanja School here in District 6, Montserrat County. The president has been escorted to his vehicle. He's been escorted to his vehicle. <laughs> Where is he going? Oh, yes, just about to get onto his vehicle. The president. Is about to enter his vehicle, and of course he's greeting some friends and uh, colleagues. The president gets into his vehicle. The president of the Republic of Liberia gets on board his vehicle, and uh, of course with tight, tight, tight security. Maka Davis, you just witnessed uh, history here. I guess this is your first time. Uh, covering a president uh, casting uh, his or her vote in an election. Well, uh, Oscar, you are right. Uh, this is my first time covering a president casting 
his or her vote because uh, our past president was a female and she voted too. I uh, never had the opportunity to do so. And today uh, I was opportune to uh, be with the president when he casted his vote and he also spoke to us right after that. And I think that's history. What kind of moment was it for you? Because uh, I was privileged when I was putting microphone to the mouth of the president. Well, I was also privileged for the fact that I also placed my microphone to the mouth of his Excellency, Dr. George Manawia, the president uh, uh, that majority of the Liberian people wanted and they voted. And uh, I think it was great that he voted. Uh, he is calling on his uh, citizens, Liberian people, to turn out and vote. He's not disappointed in the turnout. He, he is very sure that uh, they will come out and vote. Definitely. And like I said earlier on to you that uh, the president, of course, he is the president of the Republic of Liberia, but he comes from a political party that is the Coalition for Democratic Change. And that political party is feeding a candidate in Montserrado County by election. That candidate happens to be uh, a seated lawmaker, Representative Sir Joseph of District 13 in Montserrado County. And Augustine Sir, you just listened to the president. He squarely said it. Uh, he didn't hide it. He said that, uh, of course, he voted for Sir Joseph, and uh, Sir Joseph is the next senator taking his seat. Well, that is obvious. Uh, that is not a surprise. Uh, I listened to the president was, was when, when, when he was in red light, uh, begging grants for the construction of the ELW Ecological Road, where he told citizens that I, the vacancy that is being created due to a senator to the presidency, uh, he wants Sir Joseph to occupy that position. But let me be frank with you, Mr. President. I let me let me let me applaud the president for 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 his constitutional right that he exhibited. But uh, I listened to him calling upon the seditions. This election is not just about sedition; it's about Liberians. Yeah, but you have to say that because, uh, <laughs> of course, he's a sedition. So he's encouraging his uh, fellow seditions to turn out and vote for their the candidate. Seditions alone cannot uh, get Sir Joseph to that position. I think the president should be calling upon Liberians, whether you are hurt one way or another to forget about the bitterness and make sure that you cast your vote. Because voting will be very important. As he said, it is important. So this is not just about sedition, it's about, it's about Liberians. So let you call upon the Liberians in totality to come to the federal polling stations and cast their vote. Okay, that's the voice of uh, Augustine Sa, one of our reporters there at Truth 96.1 Real TV Live. We're coming to you from uh, the Kennedy School here. This is, we understand it is the elementary division of the Kennedy High School, all the smaller building, if you may, uh, where voting is actually taking place here. This is just one of the various uh, precincts across Montserrado County where uh, voting is actually ongoing. And the president of the Republic of Liberia, His Excellency Ambassador Dr. George Manu, we are just uh, completed casting his vote. And of course, we talked with him, and he said Sir Joseph is the next candidate. That means that, of course, the president voted for, uh, <laughs> you know, a seated lawmaker to be the next senator. As a matter of fact, the president justified that the seat is a seat that belongs to our CDC. And, of course, it is his seat. And he wants Sir Joseph to uh, occupy that seat. But whatever the situations are, uh, this evening, <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, time will tell what the situations will be, who is going to be the next uh, senator of Montserrado County. But it is the high hope of the president that uh, a seated lawmaker, a seated representative will assume uh, the senatorial position of Montserrado County, thereby creating another, another by-election in Montserrado County. And this time around, we hope that uh, the government will be prepared to underwrite another cause of by-election if Sir Joseph of the Coalition for Democratic Change, the uh, political party that is now the ruling political party in Liberia, a party that uh, have said that they've inherited a broken economy, a party that has said that no, there is no money as a result of that, the by-election that was supposed to be held based on the constitutional date but was delayed, was postponed, and of course taking place today. Again, this party have fed a seated lawmaker, of course. Uh, but yes, uh, others will say that there is no constitutional <laughs> you know, law to say that uh, a lawmaker cannot contest uh, you know, in the election. So well, let's see whether we can get some of uh, the electorates who have completed their voting to be able to uh, talk to us and share their own experiences. Uh, what what was it for them? So let's see whether we can talk with him. Uh, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning, sir. I see you wearing a tag. What what is it? What does it say? 
Yeah, like I'm an independent candidate from Yeke Kolita. Oh, an independent candidate. Yes. And you still out here? Yeah. I thought you're supposed to be in. Yeah, I'm in by Kimbe Sisu, my So, how is the process going so far? Well, the process is so good, it's smooth. Everything is transparent? It's transparent, sir. Are you satisfied with I'm the next satisfied. star? Well, satisfied. Satisfied. What kind of election do you want to see at the close of the day? I want to see a transparent election at the end of the day. And then see how things go better. You are the uh, agent of uh, Representative Yeke Kolubai. Looking at the turnout here, are you impressed? No, at this hour, I'm not impressed because the time is so soon, and then we are trying to see how best by the grace of God will be a retired military tennis come in as a South as a rise. It will be necessary to understand the fundamental rise because it's election is everybody's business. It will happen. Election is everybody's business. Thank you. We have to hold you there. Of course, uh, one of the observers of uh, one of the contestants, as a matter of fact, a seated representative, of course, um, Yeke Kalabai of Mount Sorado County, District 13. We have one of the electorates who have just completed, I want to believe, have completed his voting, but I'll talk to him. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning. What's your name? I'm V. Joy Sharp. Uh, have you completed your voting already? Exactly. How was it for you? It was great. Was there any difficulty? No, 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 no. Everything went smooth. Are you impressed with the uh, the staff, the National Elections Commission staff, the level of work that they're doing? Do you see transparency? Yes, yes, yes. You think this by election is going to be free of election fraud? I'm not thinking so. I'm not thinking so because what I saw, you know, it was quite interesting and impressed. I was impressed greatly. What is your own impression about uh, the turnout here? Oh, well, I just came, so I know I've found and you know, anybody around, but uh, at least I, I did my best to do mine. So. <laughs> have you been able to talk with some of your friends and uh, what have they said to you why they've not come to vote? Yeah, someone has said that uh, they are photo card called Mason and, and what have you, so that's why they problem. You know. So what message do you have to say to them? I just want to encourage them so that, you know, next time they will be, you know, they will, they will keep their cards in the right place so that when the photo time reaches, they will be able to vote. Thank you very much. A young librarian there giving his own view about uh, the process. He just came from in there from casting his vote. We have... Uh, Another citizen, an electorate, as a matter of fact, I see her showing her finger to me. Uh, <laughs> the finger is been inked already, and that means that she has completed voting. We'd like to say good morning and uh, welcome to this interview. Hi, good morning. you got to be a little bit audible. Good morning. Your name? Pinky. Pinky, you don't look happy. What is it? Are you discouraged about the process? No. No. So why are you, why are you that serious? No, I just serious. I'm happy for the election. I got the process. I'm happy for it. I see you with a bag. Did you come from work before coming here, or are you going to work now? No, I'm going to my selling place now. Going to your selling place. Yes. So how do you feel about the entire voting process today? I feel fine, good about it, because we are librarian. We have to vote. So what so kind of message do you have to say to others who have not voted? Uh, I want to lighten their minds and then come and vote because we need to choose our senator for our very self. We will not be. We won't stay out there talking and we'll say. We voted who they want, and we voted them. So we need to come. They should come to vote too, so that they'll be able to choose who they want. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, you just listened to her. She said it is a need for you to come out to vote because uh, <laughs> if you don't come to vote, uh, you will be shifting blames and saying that uh, this is not the person I wanted. Thank you very much. We have another uh, a mother in our midst, as you can see, uh, very elderly. Uh, she has braced the storm in the sunny weather to come here and uh, cast her vote. Mama, welcome to this interview. Welcome to. Thank you. Okay, what's your name? My name is Yawa Flomo. Yawa Flomo. Yawa, how was it for you? Fine. Fine. You, 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 you caught any hard time or any hard for you to No, I just can't. I finish my vote in general. Okay, so just tell all, all the things that you did. Can you enter? What the first thing they did to you? I go to the fire, they look for my car, my, no, uh, my cart, uh -huh. they find it. They give me the paper, I go, I make my footing, I come back. So they it, was, it was easy for you? Easy, no hard answer. Nobody got to explain anything to you? No. But like, you know the process by will? Yeah, oh, I know that person. Oh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So you voted for the person? Yeah. You made any mistake? No mistake. So you mark a Google Straight inside the bag? in that bag. Okay. So hmm. let's talk about the people that were inside the, 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 the work of people, the next work of people. They're working there fine. They're working no fine? mistake, no mistake. They're not making any mistake? No. No hala hala no inside? No hala hala, no trouble. You go there, you make your phone easy, okay. like a bottle. 
Oh, easy like a potter. Like they had a whole person looking. Yeah. Very easy like a potter. Yeah. So, potter, yeah. very easy. Easy. Okay. So, easy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Easy to eat a potter. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, <laughs> now uh, what, how do you feel, mama? I feel in the place, the place, plenty of people not coming. No, yeah. me, I feel bad, man, because they're supposed to vote for our senator. Because when we get senator, the play will be all red. So our country will move forward. Thank you, Mama. Thank you for talking to us. Our country will move forward. I'll tell you, you know, we have the difference between education and that of wisdom. Most of our people have wisdom. And you just listen to her. She said that voting a senator will make the country to move forward. What, the, what does that mean? That also means that she understands that the governance of the country, the governance structure of the country will only be completed when we have a full structure into place. And that speaks to wisdom. But let's talk to uh, this other mother here. I see her holding uh, perhaps her granddaughter. Yeah. We'd like to say uh, welcome to this interview, Mama. Thank you. What's your name? My name is Aisha. Aisha Siafa. Aisha Siafa. Yeah. So how was the process for you? The process was not bad. It didn't go. It was easy. Okay. What all you 